What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. So a couple of months ago, I did a video on how to hit different types of forehands because one of my most frustrating topics that I cover is when people come to me and say, hey, my forehand isn't working or my backhand isn't working, to which my response is always, what forehand are you talking about? Are we talking offensive? Are we talking defensive, rallying, heavy, slicing, topspin, lobs? They, like People always just say, well, my forehand is off. And a lot of times, if you're not paying attention to how you're trying to actually implement the shot, you won't actually be able to make the technical corrections that come along with improving that shot. The slice falls into that same category when people come to me and ask about slicing. They say, why can't my slice do X, Y, or Z? And I always ask them, what type of slice are you trying to hit? Because most people just think that it is a backhand slice or a forehand slice. So in this video, I'm going to go through the easy methodology to being able to hit a very effective slice in whatever scenario you can using only two factors that you really need to be considering. So let's get into today's video. So in the original video where I was explaining the upward motions of the forehand where we had flat rally and heavy, the swing path was the main determining factor of what the ball was going to do because we kept the racket face pretty much parallel to the net. If we wanted to hit the ball flat, we would take a linear motion and then the ball would obviously travel linear. If we wanted to hit heavy, we would drop the racket low but keep the racket face the same. We don't want to do a lot of closing and opening of the strings. When you use your slice, the problem that you come into is you're going to have two determining factors, not just one, because the racket face is actually going to determine some of what the ball's going to do. So when you're hitting your slice, there are still those three categories of a heavy slice, a rally slice, and a flat slice, but it's going to be determined by our swing path and the racket face. For example, if I hold my racket at a moderately open, sorry, barely open level, and then I take my racket in a horizontal motion, I'm going to be hitting a pretty flat slice. There's not much room for the ball to go up off of my strings unless I was to open my strings. The other thing that I could do in order to hit a flat slice is have my racket face open, but lift it more, which turns it into a higher motion, but it's going to still be a slice because the racket face is open, the ball will be spinning backwards. Now with the heavy slice, you'd have your racket set in either this position or this position, and then you'd have a swing path that determines what the ball is going to do. So if I hold my racket like this, I'd have to swing very vertical to create the spin and because the strings are facing horizontal, the ball's gonna leave pretty horizontal. Whereas if I do this and I open my strings, I'd have to move my racket horizontal to get spin, and then the ball's gonna actually take a higher trajectory. So running through those quickly, here would be my flat one where I take my racket through and I just meet the ball and go forward. Now, if I open my strings with that same motion, the ball should then float up, even though my motion is staying exactly the same. Likewise, if I want to hit heavy and low, I would take my racket higher, the ball comes in, now I'm hitting with a lot more spin, but the ball's traveling low, and if I want to hit flat and high, I would take my racket down and then open it up. So I'm determining what the ball is going to do on my racket face and on my swing path, whereas as I said, when you hit a flat ball with your top, with your actual motion, the racket face stays the same and the motion determines if I'm gonna hit heavy, the ball will come in and I roll up, but my racket face stays here, flat coming in, I would just go straight. So you have to pay attention because you're using two different things. So switching the angle, let's watch what the ball does. And back by popular demand is Coach Emily to help me demonstrate all this stuff. Now, everything that I'm saying on the forehand side is gonna be identical on the backhand, so I'm gonna flip halfway through. But all you have to do is pay attention to racket face which was going to determine the trajectory of the ball and then racket path is going to determine the action on the ball but racket face is the first thing you're going to pay attention to so if i have my racket face level the ball will stay level there's nothing that makes the ball go up unless i open those strings but, so if i'm going to keep the ball level that's flat and then this is heavy and this is flat and this is heavy now they're both staying pretty low, but I'm getting more spin and less spin, and more spin and less spin. Now I'm gonna go with the high one by opening my strings. This is 
heavy, you can see it having that float to it. And this is flat, where I'm pushing it up. This is heavy. You can hear the difference in the sound. And this is going to be flat. There's a difference in the impact acoustics, which is basically going to inform how much spin or power you're putting on. If you're hearing a loud pop to your slices, that means you're primarily hitting a very flat motion. And if you're hearing a lot of brush and friction on the strings, it means you're probably adding more spin than force. I'm going to exaggerate these in this one. Let me do the back end so that people can see both. You're good right there. So now, heavy slice. You can hear a lot of brush. And if I change that to this, you can hear the pop. Now, I'm obviously exaggerating and putting it into the nut. I'm just trying to really get a lot of that action. But you can hear the difference in the sound when you're going through versus going around. Now, if I wanted to slow it down, same exact motion, floating the slice through. And this would be more of a block. And that's going to be going through the court. So again, to recap, determining factors are going to be your racket face and your swing path. Racket face is going to control the trajectory of the ball. And then your swing path is going to control where the ball is going to go. So racket face keeps it lower high. Swing path is going to control that spin. So that's going to wrap up today's video, guys. I didn't want to go too much into the tactical aspect of it. I'm going to save that for another video. But on the technical side, the slice is very easy to manipulate. Depending on what the person does to you, you're just going to need to open and close your strings. On defense, you might need more time and send it up. On offense, you might want to keep that ball low, like approach shots or just trying to get the person to pick the ball up for you. Slicing is one of those things that some people do too much because they're afraid of actually taking topspin swings. And it's also one of those things that other people are afraid to do when they don't do enough. So I definitely recommend getting on court and just working the slice mechanics and be specific on which ones you're trying to work on. Are you trying to go low, trying to go high, are you trying to go flat, or are you trying to go heavy? And the rally ones are in the middle and you're just going to be using those to stay neutral. But until the next video and until I see you guys next time, I'll see you in the next video.